My name is Josh White, and I'm a pastor here in San Francisco, and I'm also the author of Makers and Monsters, which is a book about finding your inner artist and fighting your inner critic. My book, Makers and Monsters, kind of came from this concept that my identity is not found in what I'm able to accomplish or what I do, but simply my identity is found in who I am. I think we find ourselves in this place where we're constantly doing something, where we're constantly creating something, or we're constantly trying to pursue something different. And because of that, a lot of times our accomplishments are then dictated towards our identity. So what you accomplish is how good of a person you are. But then the flip side of that is if you're not producing anything or if you're not accomplishing anything, then who you are as a person, it, it doesn't have any validity. There's, there's no value to it. And so I wrote this book for those people who maybe number one are trying to figure out who they are, like who their identity is, or even what their identity is. It wasn't until maybe a couple of years ago, I started going on this, this different journey where I started looking at these areas in my life that were kind of competing for my happiness. So for example, perfectionism, that was one of them. Um, uh, just insecurity of not feeling like feeling like I was a good enough artist or a good enough musician. And I realized when those would creep in, all those other compliments I would get from people, uh, they, they wouldn't matter because I'm telling myself that things aren't perfect or they're not good enough. There were definitely outside sources that contributed to me feeling insecure or not good enough in just being who Josh was, who, who I was. Either that being a musician or a pastor or just a friend to people. I think there's a constant culture of comparison uh, with people around you, whether you realize it or not. You tend to not only compare but compete with people around you. and. I think I was subconsciously competing with people around me and so much so I, I think social media definitely plays a part into that and I would see people's you know highlight reels on their social media and then compare that to my behind the scenes of my life and you really can't do that because not anybody's perfect and so I was constantly comparing myself to everyone else's gold standard like their industry standard of what they felt like they should be and by looking at the little intricacies of my life that I felt like weren't good enough was really what dragged me down this almost like depressive hole of feeling like I wasn't good enough to do what maybe God had called me to do. There was definitely a pivotal moment when I had to sit back and realize how I was living my life and how I was producing in my life wasn't the healthiest, not only for me but for my family as well. I was a worship leader at a church in Las Vegas, and uh, I found myself going home every day after work, spending eight hours or even 10, 15 hours a day trying to produce musical content to a certain degree that I just didn't have the raw talent and experience to create myself. And I was comparing myself to some of the best of the best in the music industry, and I would see what I would create compare it to what I was listening to on Spotify that week and then go home uh, extremely depressed because it wasn't as good as somebody else's content or somebody else's uh, music that they were creating. And so I would find myself going home and find myself in this like very dark, depressing hole of just sitting there by myself comparing what I would produce to everyone else and that then went back to attaching it to my identity. And it was at one certain moment where I realized it was like a it was like a Friday night. I had just kind of capped my my work week off, and I just remember sitting there looking back and and kind of adding up the hours and realizing that I had spent almost the same amount of time comparing myself to everyone else around me as I did creating the content I needed to for church. And that's when I realized if I keep going down this path, this track. Uh, it's just going to take me into a downward spiral. So I had spent so long attaching my identity to the things that I would create. When I realized that wasn't my identity, I had this feeling of inner peace almost, where 
it was as if if I if I don't create something today, it's actually okay. And I remember the first time I I thought that I was in Las Vegas and I was actually like walking through like a Walmart or something like that, and this thought just popped into my head. And it was the first time in a long time that I had felt this piece of where I'm at today, in this moment, uh, the the present that I live in is not dictated by my past. And because of that, I don't have to create in the moment, in the present. I don't have to do really anything, but just be okay with who I am. Not what I create, but who I am. If you wake up and you feel like there's just something that you have to do to, to produce something that day, or there's something that you have to do um, just to, to almost survive that day, um, maybe the first thing is, what would it look like for you to stop comparing yourself to everyone around you? What if you just lived your life the way you would live your life that day? Would that look any different than how you would live your life if you're comparing yourself to everybody around you? You might be in a position today where you feel like you have to be the best of the best at whatever you do. Something that I reminded myself of even today, even this morning, was no matter if I am the best of the best, there will still be somebody better than me out there that I don't know exists. And because of that, I just need to focus on becoming the best person that Josh can be. Not, not the best producer, not the best creator, not the best songwriter or author or pastor, but as a friend, as, as a husband, as someone who's there when no one else maybe is. I just need to focus on that 